Hey, it's Joel. I'm coming to you from spring break capital of the world, <laughs> New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm here with my buddy Gnome. Good to have you here. We're Dude, super happy to have you here. I've had a number of uh, beignets, and they've been wonderful. Ah, uh, yes, yes, Probably absolutely. more than I should have. <laughs> but beignets aren't the only thing here in New Orleans. It's make good. That's right. And what do you do here at Make Good? So here at Make Good, we use 3D printing to make assistive technology. Mm -hmm. And assistive technology is anything, any device that allows somebody to do um, what they like or do daily tasks of living with more independence. Okay. And so usually it's people with disabilities and we make all sorts of things to help them live uh, full rich lives uh, with independence and fun. And that's really important. We want everything to fit in with people's lives here that we make. So I love hearing that. Before 3D printing existed, how difficult was it to get assistive devices? You know, you could buy a device commercially, but a lot of the issue is that those commercial designs, they're very outdated and they're also very expensive. Mm, and so okay. that was one option. Also, you have therapists who would make things kind of really hacked together with cardboard and tape and things like that, which are totally valid ways of doing things. But now we have these amazing tools like 3D printers to make all this stuff um, kind of customized to each individual. Well, and really, I'm looking at all this amazing, colorful material. The costs for doing it with 3D printing are also minuscule compared to the commercial costs, right? That's absolutely correct. Everything on this table is under $5, if not under a dollar to, to actually print. That's awesome. What we really focus on make it is the design work. That's, okay. the real, um, that's the real work that needs to be done and then the 3D printing is really easy with, you know, we use bamboo machines. They're very easy to use. Absolutely. And all of the stuff is really reproducible by us, but also by our community members too. Oh. So they can get 3D printers and print these devices for themselves. Oh, that's, so we share all really of cool. this work. Yeah. That's good. Well, let's, let's dive in because this is really catching my eye. And as far as being an assistive piece of tech, this looks, this looks really cool. Like I've got a self-balancing spoon. Yeah. Sp and I would imagine someone who has limited mobility, or perhaps the arm comes in at a different angle, the spoon seems to right itself. That's correct. So what's really cool is that this project started as a collaboration with local clinicians at a hospital. They sent us very basic sketches and we we're able to translate that and work with them into an actual device that they can use with their patients. What's really neat about this, if you have essential tremors, um, this will help you get uh, food to your mouth a bit easier than not having it. And what powers this is really cool. It's a print in place ball joint like that. You can see that. All that oh. is, it prints vertically like that. <laughs> and there's a gap between the ball and the, and the yeah. piece that it's holding. Um, something you could only do with 3D printing. You yeah, can't make absolutely. that any other way. No, no, you can't. Um, so that's what powers this device. And then this device and this device, this is a fixed version that doesn't rotate. They have all of these attachments that are totally modular. So we could take this TPU strap and put it on this. This one has these finger things here. You can kind of mix and match depending on your ne specific needs that you need for gripping. Oh, that's that's really cool. Yeah. And, I, and it looks like from what's on the table, that's kind of an ethos in your design philosophy is having things that incorporate the designs of other things. So we carry that ethos of, of using similar uh, design across all of our devices. And these writing devices are a great example. We have a huge variety of writing devices everything from this pen handle to this mouse. And this is a really popular ball that increases the surface area. All of these devices use the same 3D printed screw. So, you know, hmm. it, we don't have to redesign everything every time. And these are all designed to print with very minimal supports. Actually, I think this is the only one that requires a little bit of supports to print. That's an interesting shape. I can see it needs yeah. some support. Everything else prints without supports uh, really easily. And these are great devices. Um, that a wide variety of people benefit from. And we see people not only use this for writing, but we see people put forks in here and, and knitting needles. And so it's oh. really, it really can be adapted a lot of ways. And then if you think about, you know, a device that increases the surface area, sure, it works great for writing, but you know, you can pr 3D print a guitar pick and put it in there. And now you have a greater surface area for a guitar pick. So this is one example of how we can use the same devices to, to do a lot of different things. Yeah, I like that you mentioned you can, like people take it and adapt it for what they need. Yep. 
Has there been anything with this level of design here where someone adapted it in a way that you didn't quite anticipate? Absolutely. And actually, if you go on our Maker World profile, I believe for this device, somebody has remixed the screw to make it with a wider area so they're e so it's easier to screw for them. And so and everything that we're talking about, though, is shared, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's available on our Maker World profile. And, um, what we, and we love to see that from the community. Pause the video and go download it right now, <laughs> right? Yeah, and use it. Yeah, and use it, and absolutely, use it. and, and use try it. it, yeah. Okay, well, next up though, there's this. And I see it holding a paintbrush, but in thinking what you told me over here, it's not just a paintbrush that this can hold, right? That's right, yeah, this can really hold anything that fits within this TPU strap that's attached to, and you can- So this is TPU. That's TPU, regular okay. 95A TPU. And you can pull, if you pull that one out, the tail will come out. Oh, okay. There you go. And then you can see there's just a little graded slit there that allows you tighten oh. and untighten. It's very simple. But it's so simple. So this was really designed to use for odd shaped objects that don't necessarily fit in some of the other grip devices. Think like a big wooden kitchen spoon, a whisk or something like that that's uh, too big to fit within some of these other devices, anything will but fit But this is great, here. just thinking of coming up to a pot on the stove and having to grip a spoon and then do it, like the rotation of the wrist here. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. This is awesome. If you were to go online and buy something uh, from a commercial rehab supplier, this okay. would cost about $80. What? So we can make what? this for like 1% of the cost. $80? And, no. And that's why this 3D printing is so effective for assistive technology. Right. You created something that is just as good, if not better, because you can customize the color, the look, the feel, and it costs pennies compared yeah. to that. So we have a whole line of different card holders that you can put playing cards in. We have some stickers and stuff here. So you I don't didn't have, even think So you don't have that. to grip the cards. You can have it laid out here. And this is, you know, fun to use at Poker Night for everybody. All in. Well, with the cards is cool, but I'm looking at this and it's a guitar pick. And we talked about that over there. But for people that can't necessarily hold on to that, yes. there's still ways for them to be able to play a musical instrument, such as a guitar or bass, right? Absolutely. So talk about this a little bit. So we made this for a young man named Seth, who's a local musician down here. He has a Cajun family band, and he's a really cool That's guy. Fantastic. He's a really cool guy. Um, and this really started as an exercise of finding where the pick needed to go and then working backwards to his ability. Oh, it's almost like generative design. You have constraints. And yeah. What is the thing that looks like in between? So we put the pick in space where it needed to be so he can strum the strings and then work back to um, his wrist, which he still had really good uh, control over. Okay. And, and we ended up with this really great design that is really adaptable to many different people. And we've shipped these all over the country to different people. It's really important that, you know, people can enjoy their hobbies. Um, in an accessible way. Along with hobbies is, is gaming. Yeah, of and course. And I, I, when I have free time, I play games. This is neat. This is an Xbox controller. I'm very, very familiar with this. I can operate the thumbsticks. I have, I have full dexterity in my thumbs. Sure. As soon as I touch this, I'm like, this is better, even for people with full mobility. This is a project I worked on with our director of design, Philip, to make just the controllers just a little bit easier to use if you don't have really fine motor skills. Okay. And the idea is you can just kind of, with the side of your thumbs, easily hit and, and manipulate them. Oh, and it just can... And it just clips on to a regular Xbox. Once again, very easy to print, very easy to make, but very popular. We've sent these all over the country as well. I would imagine thousands um, of these. With all our designs, we try to make it so there's very little like a drilling or hardware. We want it to, you pull off the printer and it, it to work. Keep it easy peasy. This up front looks interesting and I want to yeah. talk about it because, correct me if I'm wrong, but this allows me to find things in space, even if I have limited or no sight. Yeah, this is a tactile braille floor plan. What it is is an architectural floor plan, and I'm an architect by background, oh. um, that has uh, regular uh, text labels, but also braille labels and standardized iconography. What's really neat about this is that my good friend Chris Riddell uh, took the architectural software that we use called Revit and figured out a way to export that directly into this format. So it makes oh. it much easier to make these sort of tools for people, which I think is, is, the, is the main goal. Is if this is easy to design and make, the more people will make them. That's this is cool. kind of a design exploration and we're working with 
um, some local schools and hospitals on creating tactile plans like this for playgrounds, which we think will be really, really fun. That would be great. If they're just making one-offs, this sort of ethos and design can easily be done in, in a CAD software or Tinker, even Tinkercad, Absolutely. Right? Oh, those softwares are more than capable of creating something That's like cool. this. That's cool. Yeah. Finally, though, there's a shoe on the table. There's a shoe on the table. And I'm, I'm going to pick it up here. So I see a thing. Yes. This is an assistive device. It is. It is. Uh, this is called Laceable. So Laceable was developed with a member of our community who suffered a stroke during COVID. And the one thing he said he wasn't able to do was tie his own shoes. So when I, we started working on Laceable together, um, we, start, we started thinking about, you know, how do we think about shoe tying? Well, you could try to tie a knot with one hand, but that's still really difficult to do. Uh, so we start looking around. It's really a cord management problem, right? <laughs> and where yeah. else are we dealing with cords? It's on a boat. And so using that inspiration of a boat cleat, we created a device where you can tie your shoe uh, with one hand and just clips in like that. You can wrap this around again if you want. And it securely holds your laces and it really never comes untied. That's brilliant. Which is really the fun part about it. This is our first commercial product. Oh. Yeah, so this is available for purchase on Laceable's website. And what we want to do is not only create a, a thriving ecosystem of open source technology, we also want to offer commercial solutions that are really well designed and are available for a really good price. <laughs> What's the price on this, do you know? It's like, uh, I think it's $15.99. These right now are produced with uh, SLS and MJF technology. They're extremely durable. They'll outlast the life of your shoes. <laughs> and um, they're, they're really, really great. I wear them every day. And they're not just for people who have limited dexterity, but for those people, this is a true game changer in their day-to-day -day life. So I know that there are commercial aftermarket laces available, like producer David has speed laces, sure. um, but they still require two hands, even though it's supposed to, you know, they're speedy, but this adapts to any shoe without having to relace. The real goal is it's not only they secure, you can adjust them. So if you pull tight, they can be loose and you can turn any shoe into a slip on. But ultimately we want hmm. people to keep their shoes that they like. So a right. lot of people get injured, they're, they're, somebody might say, well, why don't you go get Velcro shoes? Oh. You know, people like their Nikes, they like their they bands, like, yeah, right? Yeah, they do, absolutely. And they deserve to wear those shoes. And so this is really a way to adapt that, especially for people who um, find themselves suddenly disabled. Because you have, you know, you're, you're relatively non-disabled and you have a stroke, and now all of a sudden, you can't use your right hand. Right. This is a really easy way to adapt all the things you have already. Uh, to those new abilities. And I would imagine if if you do become suddenly disabled, part of the, the mentality there of, oh my gosh, not only can't do this, but now I can't use this, and I can't do this, and I can't do this. I would imagine assistive technology like this really aids in the mentality of acceptance and healing. That's what we've heard from a lot of our staff members in our community is that we're non-disabled or disabled. Those are like the two states yeah. of human condition. And when we're making all of this assistive tech, it's not really for like this other community of people who are disabled, it's for all of us. We'll all need these devices at some point in our lives. Yeah, that's true. And so at Make Good, we decided, you know, we can't change how the human body ages or becomes injured, but we can change the design of our environments and the design of the tools that we have. That is firmly within our control. And so what we're doing here is creating design work that is totally responsive to that to all aspects of the human experience. So Joel, I wanna share with you and to everybody out there that this kind of uh, system design is something that we can all participate in. Everybody has a role to play, whether it's designing new technology or taking stuff that's already designed and sharing it in your community. It's really easy to print this stuff and I guarantee that everybody out there knows somebody who needs one of these devices. And it's the whole point of what we're doing is to encourage people to make them themselves and, and help their own communities. And that's really the goal of what we're trying to do here. It's a good goal, man. Yeah. I really love seeing that. Noam, this has been fun and exciting and informative. And I hope everybody out there also gets some ideas and is able to go out your Maker World pro profile and to download some things. But if people want to know more about Make Good, look right there and tell them where they can go. Go to makegood.design. Uh, that's our website. Reach out to us there. And also on Instagram at makegoodnola. Well, there we go. Thanks for watching. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in and print accessible things, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And as always, high five. High five. Go on. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Yes.